Hello, this is Dr. Heath Van Horn. I just want to do a quick refresher in IP addressing. You should have learned this in Professor Chelly's class. Uh, I've also included a couple different refresher videos and a, um, uh, a website where you can test your IP addressing skills. So let's begin. So an IP address consists of four bytes or four octets, the, the highest number that you can possibly have is in, when an octet is all ones, which is the equivalent of the decimal notation of 255. The lowest number you can have is when the octet is all zeros, which is the decimal notation of zero. So what this means is that you can never have an octet of like 273 because there's not enough ones, binary ones, to make this number. That's not possible. Okay? The highest number that you can have in any octet is 255. So let's look at the classes. So class A, and uh, most people teach it this way, that class A is 1 through 126. However, what that really means, it's from 1, it's from the digit 1, binary 1, all the way up until all these ones are contained, except for this one. So that's what that means. So all class A's are prefaced with a zero. Okay, so if you get a class A binary digit, it's prefaced with a zero. A class B is always prefaced with a one and a zero. And you can tell This is the very first number that can be used. And when they're all ones, that's the very last number you can use. Everyone asks, what about this odd zero? So back when IPv4 was first starting out, they needed a, a numerical digit. So zero, zero, zero is a wild card. So when you see that, it either means nothing or it's a wild card. So you can't use that in your numbering schema. Um, sorry, I was navigating the pen here. So the thing is, is this one zero is considered one, two, seven. And you can tell that does not fall between these two numbers, right? So 127 is reserved. And that's for various uh, actions. So uh, that were reserved way back in the day when this was first developed. And so they just maintain that reservation so people can use that address space for various activities, okay? All right, so we talked about class A. Class A is begins with zero, a binary zero. Class B begins with a binary one. And class C begins with a binary one one. Okay. And that's all how these classes came to be. Again, it, class C starts at zero and then goes up to two, two, three. Um, this zero is used for class D uh, addresses, which are very, very uncommon. Um, don't ever worry about it. So well, let's talk a little bit about Boolean addition. Um, some people call this uh, bitwise addition. Um, there's so many different terms, but you know, Boolean is the way I learned it in eighth grade or ninth grade. So this is the way that I've always done it. So have a look here. All it means is that when you add two digits together in 
bitwise notation. And bitwise is a one means there's voltage. A zero means there's ground. Or no voltage. And that's the essence of all computers. It's ones or zeros. So a Boolean addition means that if you add a zero, if you add two digits together, then you only um, if you add two digits together, uh, it is not regular math. So two things must produce, must happen in order to create a one. So you can only produce a one if both digits are a one. So here's a zero, zero equals a zero. A zero, one produces a zero. A zero, one produces a zero. A one, one produces a one. So to me, this is Boolean addition. There's other names for it, but the only thing you have to remember is the only time two digits, two binary bit digits, when combined in this fashion, produce a one is when they're both a one. Other than that, they produce a zero. This is, comes into play a little bit later on. So when you have to add an octet together, so here we have an IP address of 255, 255, 255. And remember, 255 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ones. Okay. You have to add them together. So a 0 and a 1 is a 0. 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 A 1 and a 1 is a 1. A 1 and a 1 is a 1. And so you convert that to binary, back to decimal form, and you got 128 and 64, and you add those two together, along with all these zeros, and that gives you a decimal notation of 192. Okay, so if we do that down here, we do the exact same thing. A 1 and a 0 is a 0, a 0, a 1, a 0, a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 0. And what does that give us? So we got a 64 here, and we have, a, so this is... 1, 2, 4. So 64 plus 4 is 68. So that's how you add those two digits together. Okay. To convert a decimal into binary, uh, you can use a calculator. I don't mind. Um, it's just something that you want to get used to doing by hand, and I know you guys hear this from all kinds of professors, like, oh, I learned how to do it by hand. You need to learn to do it by hand. There's value in learning how to do this by hand, um, and it's not because you don't always have a calculator. Who doesn't have a calculator nowadays? The thing is, when you do it by hand, you get accustomed to how this is done, and so when the calculator lies to you, you understand that the answer that it gave you is not close to being correct. And that's the value in it. Um, otherwise, you're just going to blindly follow the calculator. And if you fat-fingered a digit, you'll still take the result as gospel. And you don't want to do that. So the simple way of converting decimal to binary is you divide by 2. So 2 divided by 7, that's 3 into 2. That's a 6. That's a remainder of 1. Okay? So then you add a 1. So now 2 goes into 3. Goes into 3 one time. 
Again, you do the subtraction, that gives you a remainder of 1. So you add a 1. And then now 2 goes into 1 0 times with a remainder of 1. And now that you have a 0 and a remainder of 1, you have a 1. And then in an octet, you would fill in so that we have 8 of them. And then you should remember how all this works. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 7. And 2 to the 0 is actually, you know, 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. Then you got 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. All right, and then you just figure out how many of these ones. So I have a 4, I have a 2, I have a 1. You add them up all together, and that equals 7. And the thing is, when you do these by hand, and here's some practice ones you can do with, when you do these by hand, um, you get used to making this conversion in your brain. Um, in class, I'm always amazed by how people go, how do you do this in your head? Um, well, first of all, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 30 years. But the second place is I do this part in my head faster than your calculator. Um, so the thing is, is the calculator, you got to remember which buttons do I got to push? How do I press? How do I do whatever? But all this stuff, there's no mechanicals. It's all in your brain and it's fast. So uh, it's just one of those things that you pick up if you practice enough times. And I'll, I can tell you, but just by looking at your IP addresses sometimes that, hey, you've got an error just because I did this in my head. All right. Binary to decimal, I just showed you how to do that. Um, so this is how binary is used. These are the max va values. Okay. And so if there's a 1 in this position, you add 128. If there's a 1 in this position, you add a 64. If there's a 1 in this position, you add 8, 2, and then you add it all together. You get a 203. All right. Sitter. So Sitter adds a layer of complexity that, um, well, it's not really that complicated, but it is to some people when they see it for the first time. So remember, we, we spoke about the class A, class B, class C. Sitter takes classes away. The, the classes are no longer relevant. Um, all Sitter is, is a way of deciding how uh, many preceding ones there is in a subnet mask. So we know from earlier 255 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then it's zero 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 zero. Okay, so that's two five five. Two five five. Two five five. Zero. Sitter counts the number of ones, and if you count them, there are twenty four ones. That's all, that's all that means. So you can try to memorize all this stuff here if you want to. I know a lot of people do. Me, I just make the conversion. So let's look at um, the next one down. Let's see how quickly I can write this. The stylus doesn't have a wipe all pen marks on it, so I have to do it by hand. Okay. So if we look at 25, so we know 255 is ones. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1. Because we know that 
that position is a 128. And then we fill in the rest with zeros. And now we can see that the sitter notation is 25 ones. Okay. On the other side of this, we can see that that's how many addresses we can use. Now that looks a little confusing, but I'll show you what that means here in just a second. So I'm going to erase this octet because we know it's all ones. Okay. All right. So we're just dealing with the last part. So it says we have 128 addresses. This, everything on this side belongs to the subnet. Basically, let's say that's your surname. So for me, it'd be HVH. Everything on that side belongs to your subnet. These are the members of your family. So in my case, you know, we got Matt, Rachel, and all my kids and cousins and everything else. That's how many are allowed to be had. And the count starts at zero and it ends. If anybody wants to add that up, that equals to 127. Now this is confusing to people. Wait a minute, you just told me that we have a range of 128. Yes. You have a number, the highest number you can have is 127, but zero is still a number. So 127 plus one more number is 128. Let me explain that one. And I know you New York guys freak out when there's math involved. But let me show you this. How many numbers are there? If you said five, you're wrong. There are six numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, zero is a number. So you have to remember that memory is a, is a, a premium and all the computers are set to count zero as the very first digit. If you guys took my programming class, you'll know how frustrating it is to have an off by one error because you do not understand the difference between the number five and six numbers being used. So, all right, enough on this. So here's a good way of practicing. And hopefully you're following along in your textbook on this stuff. I'm just giving you a quick rundown of what this is involved. So we have uh, an IP address here. This is common IP address sitter notation. So here we have the number 16. That's our sitter, 16, which means we have 16 ones. Okay, so we have 16 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot. And that, if you've been tracking, that's 16 ones. Followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So the decimal equivalent of that is 255, 255.0.0. Just a second, I gotta put my glasses on. All right, so now we look at our network. Our network consists of I'm going to give you guys time here to work on these at the same time, but you can open up your, your computer's uh, calculator. And if you click on the options, you can go to the programmer calculator, and it makes this so much easier. So we know 
but the network itself is 49.101.41.201. And that's the equivalent of a binary 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, and then 101 in binary is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, O one. And then we have forty one, which is going to be very similar to our first one. So zero zero one zero one zero zero one. Okay. And the last one of 201 is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. All right. So when we merge the mask and the network together, all we're doing is that Boolean math. And we're recording the output. All right, so what we're doing is we're adding these together in a Boolean fashion. So a zero and a one is a zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, dot, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one. And we know, because all these are zeros, that all these are going to be zeros. Because since none of them are ones, we don't have to do the math. And so what does that tell us? Well, we convert this back, and we've got 49.101.0.0. .0. That is our first host number. Okay. Now our last host is, this is where things get interesting. What we do is we draw this wall on these dots. Didn't come across on the computer very well. And then we flip all these zeros to ones. One, 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 one. Okay. And that is your broadcast address. Oh, these are backwards. That is your broadcast address. So this won't change. So we got a forty nine. Point one oh one, and then we already know that this, when it's all ones, that number is two five five, two five five, and this is a flag to the system to say transmit to everybody in that network. And that's why it's called the broadcast address. Okay, like I said, these are backwards. Shoot me, I'm still human. Your last host is going to be minus one. So your last host that you can use is going to be 49.101.255.254. So your last usable address is going to be when there's a zero at the end. Okay? All right.
Okay. Yeah. So you can check your answers in that way. So here we'll do it one more time. So our subnet mask is 26. So that means we have 26 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember, I had to do this on a computer before. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that gives us 24, 25, 26. And then we fill the rest in with zeros to complete the octet. When we do this, when we convert this, the subnet mass becomes 255, 255, 255. Then one nine two. Okay. Our network we know is two one six seven seven two one six ninety nine. So 216 in binary is 1101, 1000. That is 77 becomes 0, 1, 0, 0. One one zero one. Two one six comes one one zero oh, one one zero zero zero. I think that's it. And then ninety nine. Zero one one zero 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 one one. Okay. So now we apply to find our first host, we perform our Boolean math. So a one and a one is a one, one and a one is a one, one and a zero is a zero, one and a one is a one, and we do this for The entire uh, network mask is applied to the network. All right, so that gives us the equivalent of two one six. Seven seven two one six and then sixty four. I did the math correctly. Yeah. So that's our very first IP host. So we cannot do a sixty three because that's outside of our network. Okay, but if we want to know what our again, these are backwards. It's easier to figure out. We draw this wall, and then we flip all these bits here to one. And then all of these are the same. So none of these have changed. So bring those, you can either bring them down, or you can just read this 
up here. So that'll be 216-77-216.127. And that's your broadcast address. And then you subtract 1. And since it was 127 up here, your last host is going to be 126. Okay. So that's how you uh, apply the network mask to a network address. Yes, so the math came out right. All right, so I have a lot of these examples here. I'm not going to go through them all. You can do them yourself. And that is it um, for review of how subnet masking works. And that is it on how submasking works. If you have any questions, let me know. This should be just a review for you folks that took Chelly's class. Um, it augments the textbook and it augments the uh, items I gave you online. So um, with that, I will leave it to you and uh, have a good day.